Hey YouTubers, Michael and Yev here from One Liter ADB. So the Africa Twins developed some squeaky brakes. It's winter time, so no better time to inspect the brake pads, clean up the rotors and the calipers, bleed the brakes and change out some of the brake fluid. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of take off some of the sheen off of the rotors by using a um, scotch brite pad. And I'm just gonna kind of just take off the sheen and some of the embedded particles that are in the... Hey, what's this? Uh, that is to get the front wheel off the ground. Based on the evidence on the rag, that actually does work pretty well to clean up your rotors and take off the sheen. Okay, so we're gonna start with the front brakes, obviously, and I'm gonna remove one caliper at a time. I'm gonna take off the caliper, take out the pads, inspect the pads, clean the caliper, and reinstall, and then move on to the other side. Um, to remove the caliper on the Africa Twin, it takes a 14 millimeter, and it's two bolts. Okay, so I'm going to remove this caliper and we're just going to give this a little quick inspection. I think we're going to have to push back these pistons just a little bit to get the brake pads out because right now I don't think I have enough room to get the clear one. So I'm just going to take my a screwdriver or some type of tool and kind of push these pistons back just to give me enough room. So once one comes out, there's plenty of room for the other one, obviously, to come out now. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, why does it smell like brake, flu brake cleaner fluid so much? This is sitting under my nose. <laughs> so the first thing I like to do is just kind of inspect these brake pads. And um, I usually take an awl like this, and I just kind of clean out the brake, the brake dust that's kind of between them and just kind of clean out that area because you can get some buildup through there and then just kind of look on the edges and just see if you need to kind of kind of just scrape some brake dust off of off of there these look pretty good there's not a lot of buildup but there is a, there is a you know there obviously is a little bit so for the two people watching that like the dentist this is going to be really fun yeah so just be careful you don't want to scout you don't want to score your the face, so just get down in the groove and just kind of clean out that that area. It may be a good idea, I didn't do this, but it may be a good idea to remember which side these came out on. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, they seem pretty even, so if you wanted to keep track of which is right and which is left, you know, that, that wouldn't be a terrible idea, but I did not do that. Okay, so the next thing I just do is I just take some, some compressed air and just you know, use that to my advantage to clean out any brake dust. So the next thing I'm going to do is just um, take some simple green and some water. And I'm going to try to just clean these uh, pistons out where it doesn't introduce any of the brake dust into the brake fluid and just kind of clean up this caliber in general. If this doesn't clean the squeak, then Poor Yev's just gonna have to live with it because after this, I'm not sure what to do. Nothing? Hmm? I'm trying to think of something clever to say, Michael. Yeah? Actually, unfortunately, I think it's your rear brake that's squeaking out your front. Oh, uh, well. So everything you're doing is pointless right now. I don't know, but don't I look cool? Like I know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you, does it matter if you're using a Colgate brand right. or a Crest brand toothbrush? Yeah, it does not, that doesn't matter. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll link the toothbrush down in the description below. Okay, yeah. Do you yeah. want to have a soft bristle if, if you... Soft or medium? I, I'm going to go soft on that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just make sure you put it back in your wife's, you know, drawer after you're done. Just, you know, so you don't... She doesn't have to look for her toothbrush. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Okay, now with the caliper um, really clean, my clean my um, my word of advice is if you're gonna use your brake, 
Um, just make sure you don't push these pistons out too far. You just want to get them pushed out a little bit so you can clean them, but don't push them out too far where it's hard to get your brake pads back in and you don't want to do some any heavy prying on, on the pistons or the brake pads. So just be careful, just move them out just a little bit, clean them, and then uh, be ready to put your, your, um, your pads back in. Um, it's easier to get one side kind of in place and then the spring down there will allow you to get the other side in if you kind of have them squared up, right? So that's one side. Of course, we have plenty of room on the other side now to get this one in. There we go. So I'm just gonna put a touch of Loctite on these um, just for good measure. You don't need very much. Um, these bolts from the factory um, are prepped with some type of uh, material on them and we just put just a dab of blue Loctite on them. And then with your pads in, everything clean, you can put that back on your rotor and we're going to do something here that allows the pistons to kind of recenter up. So what I do is I get these bolts on until they seat without torquing. We're just going to seat them down. And then we're going to back them off just like an eighth of a turn. Just a little turn here. So it's not fully seated. So this thing kind of floats just a little bit. And the goal is to get all four pistons to move at the same time and at the same distance. So right now we're going to pump the brakes up and that's tight now. And these pistons should be kind of at the, all at the same distance. If you look down in there, you can kind of see all of the pistons are at the same distance out. So you should be getting equal pressure on all four pistons now. And now that everything is centered up and tight, we can go ahead and snug these bolts up. And then at the end, we'll come back and torque them. But everything should be centered up now. Okay, so now we're up at the reservoir and what we're going to do is we're going to take off the top plate and the little diaphragm that's in there. Just be careful of drips because, you know, this stuff is, they say, is very corrosive and can eat your paint. So um, maybe a good idea to have a, have a rag in hand. Take off the plate. And we're gonna take out this little diaphragm. Before you, maybe a little tap right there so there's no drips. And just, you know, just inspect your diaphragm here. Just make sure there's no holes. This looks look fine. And it'll be ready to be put back in. And now what we're gonna do if you take a look in here, the color of this fluid is obviously, you know, used, right? So it's got some discoloration. So we're going to take a little syringe here. And this is only 10 mils, so we're just going to suck out most of this old fluid. And here you want to be very careful not to pump your brakes, obviously, right? Because you don't want to suck in any air at this point but we'll get most of this brake fluid out and replace with new and then we'll start we'll start bleeding the brakes okay so there's a little bit of residual left over there and i think we're going to get that cleaned out 
when we start bleeding. We're going to use dot four. This is the Honda dot four. Um, any dot four will do, but just make sure that you're using the right um, type of fluid for your bike. So we're just gonna fill this up and we're gonna start bleeding. And um, with the reservoir full of new fluid, we're gonna come down here to each caliper and find the, um, the bleeder valve, which has a rubber boot on it. So we'll remove the boot. And this is an eight millimeter. Okay, so this is just um, a gas line hose that you can get at your auto parts store. Just make sure you get the right size. You don't wanna suck any air in here, but just have something to drain it into, obviously. And we're going to loosen this nut now and we're going to pump the brakes until we get clear fluid. Okay, I am holding it. Okay, I'm going to tighten it up. Okay. Letting go. So just put your diaphragm back in, just make sure it's clean. Get that to seat. Hopefully you enough, left enough room in your reservoir so it doesn't just, when you push it in, it just goes all over the place. And then just make sure your wording is the direction you want it. <laughs> and from memory of most, mo most of my bikes, these, these uh, Phillip head screws can be just butter soft, so I would be gentle on those. Okay, so with the front wheel done, we're moving on to the back. And of course, um, this can be a little bit easier just because there's only one caliper, but in my opinion, the, removing the caliper is just a little bit harder than the front. But the first thing we do is, this is your ABS line right here. And it's got a clip and they, one goes one way, one goes the other way, but we're just gonna re remove that clip and just get your ABS, because you need access to this Allen head. So that's now out of the way. Um, there's three bolts that we need to keep an eye on here. There's one here, one here, and one here. This one holds the actually the pads in the caliper, and this one here um, will allow us to rotate the caliper up. And this is the actual one that holds it on. So I'm going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt first. That, that would be the bolt you remove because you just wanted to remove your wheel off the, off the swing arm, right? Right. That it, would flip it, well, up it the... makes it a lot easier, yeah. Of course, there's a there's a rubber boot in here, so just, just keep an eye on everything. This now will rotate up. Before you remove this Allen right here, you want to, you just want to loosen this off because it's going to be hard to um, break this bolt when the caliper's off, but right now it's still attached. And this is an 8 mil. And we're just going to release this pin. And now that's at least loose. Now you can take this six mil, remove this last bolt and this caliper should come right off. And just be careful with your ABS line there. You don't want anything to happen to that. And now the caliper can come off. So I'll take that pin off. Eight millimeter. Uh, this is an eight millimeter and there's a little o-ring at the end of that. So just keep an eye on that Now if you're replacing your pads On the back, this is not on the front. This is on the back only. There's a little plate here That you want to keep track of this is the pad right here and this is a plate with the I don't know some type of ceramic or I, I don't know what this is, but There's a there's a plate and a backup plate and just make sure you keep keep an eye on that. And if you're gonna replace your pads, just make sure you move this over. And the gap here on these pads is is, is much larger than it is on the front. So there's there's no reason to uh, to clean all that out unless there's there's material. But we will take uh, the brake clean and just kind of clean the surface up of these. There is a little spring down here. You want to make sure that this is hasn't been misplaced, but just make sure it's seated down. It's pretty obvious when it's seated down correctly. And then slide your caliper on with your brake pads, of course, on each side of the rotor. 
and then make sure that this little ear seats right down in there. I don't know if you can catch that, but that little ear has got to get caught in the correct position or this caliper is never going to go on correctly. This bolt should line up and this bolt should line up now. We're going to put a little white lithium grease on this guy as well. And there's a little rubber boot, of course, in this guy. And if you feel like you're forcing anything here, something is wrong. So if it, if it doesn't go as smoothly as you think, then just make sure everything's lined up correctly, especially those ears down there that we pointed at. And now this thing should be able to slide down in almost perfect position for this bolt here. And that should line up. Okay. Okay, like the front, we're going to um, we're going to remove this reservoir off its post here, just because um, there's no access to the cover without removing it. Okay, here is your bleed valve right here. Of course, there's a rubber bit on this one as well. And we'll get our eight mil ready. We'll put on, that's cracked now. And just keep an eye on your reservoir there. And you're just flushing the system right now, right? Yeah, I'm just flushing it out of the lines. That way everything in the lines is now the new brake fluid, not mixed with the old. So I'm gonna, we, this thing is full. You have the bleed valve closed. closed yes. I'm gonna put pressure on the brake and then you're gonna release the valve. Right. Air is gonna, if there's air, it's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. You tighten the valve and then I'll let go of the brake. Right, exactly. Okay, so I've got pressure, pressure on the brake. Okay, and I'm gonna open. Okay, and then close. And I don't see any bubbles. So now we're closed. I let go of the brake. And we should be good. We should have new fluid throughout the lines. The reservoir is at the upper level, or is it above the upper level? It's a little bit of, but this thing's not perfectly flat. Okay. If there's too much in the reservoir, what we've done was we, would, we just pumped the brake and let it out while the valve is open. Or use your syringe and just pump. Or syringe, you're, that's a good point, just use your syringe. If you're by yourself especially, that'll be easier. Okay, so I've got my fluid right at the upper level mark, which leaves enough room for my diaphragm, which I'm gonna seat down well. Your cap. And of course your two screws. These are long screws that go down into the plastic, so just don't over torque this. Of course, you don't need much torque on this. Make sure you don't have any brake fluid everywhere. 